the news that the new president of Argentina was bringing the Falkland Island subject up again made me wonder what happened to those cars from the Top Gear Patagonia special when the number plate on Jeremy Clarkson's Porsche caused a bit of controversy. And also, what other information has come out in the meantime? So join me as we see what we can find out. It's now nearly 10 years since that program came out. And obviously over the years, little bits and pieces come out. And recently, Ben Collins had a podcast, he of Stig fame, where he spoke to Richard Porter, who was one of the writers on Top Gear and was involved in that Patagonia program. He says what happened was, Jeremy Clarkson had, ins had insisted he wanted a Porsche 928 GT manual. And when the researchers went out to the market to find one, they could only find two. They contacted both sellers, only one replied. They had the car inspected by a Porsche mechanic to give it a thumbs up. And so they purchased it remotely. Time apparently was tight. They popped it into a container and sent it off to South America. Now, when the controversy over the number plate reared its head, they then went back and looked at the advert and allegedly the number plates on the car were blanked out. So literally, how were they to know that it was that number plate? The other thing is, obviously, as there was only two cars for sale at the time of the spec they were looking for, the chances of them going out and actually being able to find a car with that number plate, let's be honest, are pretty remote. So Richard Porter goes on to say that they went out to South America, started off filming as they normally do, and as is often the case, some pictures got leaked out onto the internet of what they were up to. And this is where somebody pointed out, are you sure about that number plate? They then took a second look at it and thought, well, just to make sure there's no problems, what we'll do is we've got another researcher coming out a few days later. We'll get them to bring a second set of number plates. And what we'll do is we'll get May and Hammond to overnight put them onto Clarkson's car and make the problem go away. Unfortunately, it all kicked off before they had the chance to do this. Once the presenters were back in the UK, both... Um, Hammond and May went on TV and radio to explain this. We yeah. never checked a number plate in our yeah. lives. That was the number plate the car was born with. Phosphorus. We can way. prove unequivocally, and in fact you can look at it yourself, they're all wearing the numbers that they wore from new. Unfortunately, this is the bit where I think they weren't either told exactly what had gone on or had actually um, known the fact and didn't share it. But if we do a My Car Check, this car was not registered H982FKL from the start. Originally, it was H1VAE. And then that changed from a private plate to a regular plate. And in these situations, just to explain to any, anyone who doesn't know, that if you have a private plate to start with and you want to go to a normal plate, what the DVLA will do is give you a age-related plate, as they describe it, so a, a plate that would have been issued in that year. But this happened in May 2001, 13 years before this car was acquired for the programme. So there's definitely no link up there. So as most people know, when it all kicked off big time, Clarkson, May and Hammond, they got flown out, hoping that would defuse the situation. But unfortunately it didn't. And leaving the crew behind, people like cameraman, sound engineers, etc., who had to try and escape overland. They abandoned the Porsche, the Lotus and the Mustang, and headed off overland and eventually had to cut across country into Chile for safety. In the immediate aftermath, the police examined the cars and in the boot of Clarkson's Porsche, found the dummy plates that it was intended that Hammond and May were gonna put on his car. Unfortunately, they spout out bell end and the Argentinian authorities decided this was another form of insult against them or that was how it was intended to be. It's also rumoured that the H1VAE number plates were found in the car. Now, I don't really get that because if someone's got a private plate and you you take it off to put it on another car, why would you give the plates away? I'm not quite sure where that's come from. It's not impossible. Personally, I think it's fairly unlikely. So what ultimately happened to the car? Well, Auto Evolution shared a picture on their website showing the cars in a warehouse, and this was apparently in Rio Grande. And it's understood that a representative, is how it was described, of the, the team contacted uh, the authorities down there to see how they could recover the cars back to the UK. Now, 
you can probably understand the Argentinian authorities weren't um, very keen on these cars to be released because they believed they would be used as trophies sort of in the TV studio as you know, how they sort of knock one over on the Argentinians. Now the Merco Press reported, which is a um, South Atlantic news agency, uh, in 2019 that these cars had been crushed and shredded to the size of nuts. Now apparently there were various representatives present at the time and only one of them was allowed a uh, photographic device to record the event to prove what had happened. Everyone else apparently, including the British official, had to hand in their you know, cameras and phones and so on and the process went ahead. Now, it's down to the size of nuts. Now, interestingly, and I'm sure we wouldn't get an answer uh, from the Argentinian authorities, but was it shredded to the size of an M10 nut or one of Clarkson nuts? Could be interesting to find out. So, I hope that fills in possibly a few blanks for you. I hope you enjoyed that. And if you did, here's another video that we think you're going to enjoy.